Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and before Unify version 9.3, their DHCP server was, well, let's just say it wasn't handing out convenience. But now Unify is offering up a more full-featured DHCP setup, which includes the ability to import and export reservations. That means you can bring a list of your own devices, pre-assigned IPs, and not have to tediously do it via the client devices. Now, before we get started and showing how this works, a word from today's sponsor, me. Are you an individual or forward-thinking business seeking expert assistance with network engineering, storage, or virtualization projects? Maybe you're part of an internal IT team that needs to proactively manage, monitor, and secure your technology. We offer comprehensive consulting services tailored to meet your specific requirements. Whether you need fully managed or co-managed IT services, our team is ready to help you. We specialize in supporting businesses that require IT administration or teams seeking an extra layer of support to enhance their operations. Our install team is ready to assist you with all of your structure cabling and Wi-Fi planning needs as well. To learn more about any of our services, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out the Hire Us form, and let us start crafting the perfect IT solution for you. If you want to show some extra love for our channel, check out our swag store with shirts, hats, dust accessories, and more. We also have affiliate links down below that will get you discounts and deals on products and services we talk about on this channel. With the ad read out of the way, let's get you back to the content that you came here for. Now, the first place I want to start is the client page because it's been changed quite a bit. And it used to be the only place you handled DHCP, which was not a great experience. We still do have down at the bottom the ability to add a client manually. So this still can be done from the page. We can put the MAC address in, give it an alias, set a fixed IP address. So you can predefine clients when you bring them online, they will get the IP address you want. I'll show you in a moment how to do the import export, but I wanted to show also that they have grouping options. And this is also another feature they've added. So when I click on a client, I can see the details of it. I can see what groups it belongs to under the settings here, and I can add it to more groups if I wanted to make this also part of my lab group or the ability to create a new group from here and add the notes, see the fixed IP address of the client. Most of these features are still blended similar to the way they were in the past, but a little bit more of an enhancement. Obviously, there's a lot of other filters right here. You can specifically narrow it down to wired versus wireless or even which devices they're connected to. So we can filter this down to say, only show me devices connected to this network and click on them. And once again, we have all the details where we can see the IP address. And if you want to set things to a fixed IP, you have that ability here as well. Now let's move on to the overview page under settings so we can get to the main DHCP server. Now from the overview page, you can see an overview, Wi-Fi, networks, et cetera, but nothing dedicated to DHCP server. This wasn't obvious to me at first, but the DHCP manager is right here. When you click on it, it brings you to all the DHCP networks. From there, you can filter to any particular network that you're going to be looking at. For example, I am going to use zone one test as my test and demo network here for doing the import and export, but you can also filter to any of the other ones in the list. Now going back over to the overview page, I also wanna point out if you'd like to go directly to the network, and we're gonna to go to this second page here where we have zone two test. If we click on the leases, it will take us directly to the page and automatically filter for this. We also have the gear icon right here, which gives us access to the DHCP server and the ability to set and change any of the settings here. Now, if we go to this network by going back over to the gear icon, this network's on page two, we'll click on it, and those same DHCP options are here. So there's two ways to get to it. Now, I also wanna point out whenever you're creating a new network, by default, it's all on auto here. And auto also means it has the ability to auto expand and auto scale networks. That is checked by default. You have to uncheck this and you can go to manual and set your ranges for DHCP. With auto scale on, this is no longer customizable and will auto scale the network as needed. I personally prefer manually setting the network and the network ranges, something of note. You can only set one DHCP range. So if we set this to 100 to 254, it lets us know we're going to have 155 usable IPs, but there's not any way to set a series of ranges if you had some need to do that. You are able to set DHCP reservations inside or outside of whatever DHCP range you choose here. Now, as we scroll down, there's a few other options here. I've never had a problem with this, but there is a note if you click on learn more, which will take you to the Unify page on DHCP. And this is the ping conflict detection. I've always left it on, but there is a warning that on 
certain networks, maybe of a larger scale, you might have a problem with ping detection because it does send a ping, see if there's a reply. Some devices do not respond to pings, so it may take a little bit longer to hand out the address. But as I said, I haven't had an issue, but if you do, that's something worth noting. Then we have the ability for network boot, NTP server, option 43, where you can put a specific IP address in, TFTP, time offset, WPAD URL, Win server, and of course you can add your custom options. I like that they've given you a full feature DHCP server. So if you have some custom function for devices you have on your network, you're able to add those custom functions and the proper code here. Now, by default, the lease time is set to one day. Generally, that's fine. There are exceptions, of course, if you have a very busy guest network and lots of devices coming and going in less than that 24 hour period, you can reduce this if needed to prevent having issues on that network. Now let's talk about importing and exporting from the DHCP manager. When we're on all networks and we don't have any of these checked, when we hit export, it exports everything in the list, even devices that are offline. But if we filter for only offline devices and export, it will now only export the offline devices and their IP addresses. I'm going to go and not mess up my whole network, but use this one test network where I have Debian 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 set up. These are some virtual machines that I built for this demo, and I let them get, well, any random IP that was handed to them. And I want to make these sequential. So let's go ahead and export this list, which will be a CSV that we can open up in a standard spreadsheet. I'm just using LibreOffice here, but let's go ahead and give these Debian systems static IPs. We'll give this one 11. I have them renumbered 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now it says least type dynamic. If these would have been fixed, it would have said fixed right here, but it doesn't matter when you re-upload. If you say least type dynamic, it's going to ignore that because anything you have in this list here will be assigned to the system as a fixed least type. So let's go ahead and save this. And we're just saving it back in the same CSV format. And now we're going to upload it into Unify. You can see the name of the file is the same. We're just going to go ahead and select it. It lets me know that five of these six leases, sector import, existing device IP settings will be overwritten, replaced with fixed IP. I believe that it sees the one extra header that wasn't valid. If it has any invalid data, it seems to throw it away, which is great. Let's go ahead and import these. All of these have been changed to fixed lease. Now it's showing the last IP address they have, but the fixed IP will show the IP address they will be getting. Now, one minor bug I want to note that I found while doing this demo was that once you do an import, the DHCP server on the back end isn't restarted as of version 9.3. I have reported this to Unify. It may be fixed in the future when you're watching this. The simple solution is I'm going to add one second to the lease time or really make any change here, hit apply, and that'll force the DHCP server on the back end to restart, and then the imported list will work. Now that we've restarted the DHCP server, I'm going to restart all these VMs so they get the new IP addresses. So let's go ahead and force reboot all of these. And you can see my virtual machines have come back up with 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 as their IP addresses. And we look in DHCP manager and we see 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Now the process I just used to export existing dynamic leases and change them to fix will also work if you just want to dump a bunch of MAC addresses in and a bunch of IP addresses in and assign a lot of devices that have never been attached to your Unified Network before, that'll work just as well. Let me know what you think. Leave your thoughts and comments down below. Like and subscribe to see more content and connect with me on the socials over at lawrencesystems.com or in the forums at forums.lawrencesystems.com. All right, and thanks.